So um, this is what we're going to talk about today, the Feast of the Passover. All right, and with that, let's find our scripture reading. And our scripture reading is taken Exodus chapter 12, verses uh, 1 to 6. If my reader is ready, please go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take them, take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb sh shall be without blemish. A male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Mm -hmm. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay, thank you very much, my brother, um, for the reading. And with that, we just want to give all honor, all glory, and all praises to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, so um, as we've just read here, we see that the Heavenly Father says that the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. And, and he said, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So whichever month that was, the Heavenly Father said, this is going to be the beginning of months for you. It shall be the first month of the year to you, right? And, you know, this is why whenever you hear me introduce the date that I always say, such and such is the date according to the pagans, but according to the Hebrew Israelites, it is such and such, right? And this is the reason, because the Lord established a new year um, and what is referred to as an ecclesiastical year, or we we call it the sacred year for the Israelites, right? And these are the only people that the Heavenly Father established this timekeeping with, okay? And the Lord went on to say to Moses, says to speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying that in the 10th day of, the, of this month, so whichever that month is, which is the first month of the, of the year that the Lord has established with Israelites, he says on the 10th day of that month, you should take every man a lamb, according to the house of his fathers, a lamb for an, an house, right? And then he said, if the house is too big or if the house is too small, bring your neighbor in, right? Or go to your neighbor's house. All right, and then in verse five, it says, and your lamb shall be without blemish. Why is it that the lamb should be without blemish? Why? Because it represents the sinlessness of the one who should come and die as the lamb of the world, as the lamb of Israel. That is why. Okay? And it says a male of the first year. Why is it a male? Because it can't be a female, right? Because the the true lamb of God it has to be what? A male, right? And it says, ye shall take it out of the sheep or out of the goat. And ye shall keep it up until when? Until the 14th day of the same month. And then what should happen? What should happen, family? The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it. When? In the evening. In the evening. All right. So <clears throat> this is very important to the to the Israelites. And um, what happened was that this lamb and this blood would represent what? The passing over of the dead angel. 
It would represent salvation for Israel. That's what it means. Right? And let us let us just go on to reading the rest of this real quick. It says, it says, and um, and they shall take the blood and strike it upon the two side posts and uh and on the upper post of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat it that night, right? Roasted with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Now, by the way, you know, somebody had said to me, um, I said to me, because we celebrate the Passover with the drinking of wine. And somebody said, well, you're not, you're not celebrating the Passover because here it says that you must take it with bitter herbs, right? With bitter herbs. Now, do you know that, um, that the bitter herb represents the wine? And, um, and then we'll talk about that later because we're going to see that when Yahweh Shai was, um, was having the last supper with his disciples that they drank wine. Okay, and the scripture says that the bitter herbs represents the wine. Okay. And gird your loins, right? With your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And this is why we get the term Passover. Right? Verse 13 says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. There it is. This is why it's referred to as the Passover. Okay. Now, let us um, identify which month this is. Which month? Because the Lord just says, that this month is the first month of the and the beginning of the year for you. So now we need to identify which month that is. Okay. And what we're going to do is go to um <clears throat> we're gonna go to Exodus, the thirteenth chapter. I'm gonna read verse four. Verse 4, it says, This day came ye out in the month of Abib. So now we see that the month is given a name, the month of Abib. So Abib is the first month of the Hebrew Israelite year that the Lord established with Israel. It's called Abib. Okay? Let's go look at another, at another scripture. Let's go to Exodus 23. Exodus 23. And we're at verse 15. And it says. And it says. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. As I have commanded thee. In the time appointed. Of the months of Abib. For in it. Thou camest out of Egypt and shall not appear before me empty. So the Lord is saying that the Israelites came out of Israel in the out of Egypt in the month of Abib. And that is the month that he said is the first month of the year unto the Israelites. Let's look at let's look at one more. Let's look at one more. Let's go to Deuteronomy. And by the way, you know, um, family, I keep saying that if if you're being taught the scriptures and and your your teacher is not going line upon line, usually there's something wrong with what they're teaching you. Okay, and uh, we find that um, especially the Christian pastor, they do not go line upon line. They read one scripture and then they preach a whole story around it and a and a good um, feel good doctrine, and you know you learn nothing from the scriptures. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 1 says, Observe the months of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, Yahweh thy God brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, out of Egypt by night. So we know that that first month that the Lord is talking about is the month of Abib. And he said that we should keep it. Um, 
as a memorial, right? Let's go back to Exodus, the 12th chapter. And now we're going to read down to, um, we're going to read verse 14. Down. Because tied to the Passover is what? The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh throughout your generations. And ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. For how long? Forever. So the Christian church that tells you that these feast days are done away with. It's going off. Right? And is designed to destroy you. This is why they tell you they're all done away with and, and, um, and Jesus, Jesus fulfilled them. And they're done away with. But the Lord said that they, for, they are for an ordinance forever. And he goes on in verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven, leavened bread from the first day, until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day, what first day? The first day of the seventh. Okay, of the seven days of unleavened bread. In the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. So you're going to have a holy conv convocation or what we call a high day Sabbath on the first day of the seven days. And then on the seventh day of those those same seven, seven days is another holy convocation. So one day at the start is a Sabbath, and one day at the end is a Sabbath. And it says, no manner of work shall be done therein, except that which every man must eat. So you must, you can bake your unleavened bread on these days. That only may be done. So you can prepare your meals, prepare your unleavened bread, on those uh, Sabbaths. And he says. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in the same day. The same, same day. Have I brought your armies of the land of, e of Egypt. Therefore. Shall you observe this day. In your generations by an ordinance. For how long? Forever. Right? Forever. Verse 18. And in the first month. And in the 14th day of the month at evening. You shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. And he repeats it. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. And by the way, here is the word stranger. And the, and the Christian church says, see, the pagans, the pagans, right? Now, remember, we talk about that stranger, okay? Now, which stranger is this? This is a gar. It's a gar. Let's look. Let's look at it real quick. Especially seeing that we are coming across these words um, more and more these days, right? So let us confirm these words. Last night, we did we did Bethuel and Alma. Let's, let's confirm. Let's confirm this stranger. It says, whether he be a stranger, be the word. And here it is. It's a gar. A gar. This is an Israelite foreigner born outside of the land of Israel. And if he comes in to keep the Passover with you, he can participate. All right? Okay, so the Lord also um the Lord also re, re, repeated the feast days in Leviticus 23. Now, in tonight's lesson, we're, we're only going to talk about the Passover, right? Because remember, that's our topic, the Passover. So we're only going to talk about the Passover. As we continue through the feast days, we'll talk about, um, you know, Pentecost and trumpets and atonement and tabernacles but for tonight's lesson we're going to just touch on the basics of the passover 
and we'll continue to talk about the Passover during this season of the Passover. Okay? So, in Leviticus 23, we see the, the laws of the religious festivals, and it is repeated. Verse 1 says, And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. And by the way, the first feast is the Sabbath. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no survive, no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. So the very first feast of all the feasts is the seventh day Sabbath. Okay? And it repeats every seven days. Because as we go to the next verse, it says, These are the feasts of Yahweh, even all the convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons. And now the Lord is going to give us those feast days that have dates. So it is evident that the weekly Sabbath is a cyclical occurrence every seven days. Then the Lord starts to lay out the other feast days that are that have dates and which are yearly and so on, right? So here is verse 5. And the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. And then on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. And then the Lord is going to repeat the same thing that we just read in Exodus 12. In the first day, what first day? The first day of these seven. Ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But you must offer an offering made of fire unto your house for seven days. Now, people ask us, do you offer the offering? And the answer is no, because Yahweh Shai already is that offering. But do we not keep the feast days? Yes, we do keep the feast days. Okay? And by the way, we'll see why as we continue during this, this series. And then it says, and in the seventh day is the holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So on the first day of the seven is a holy convocation. And on the seventh day of the seven days of, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a holy convocation. All right. So um, what I want us to do is uh, we're going to take a look at our calendar. We're going to take a look at our calendar to identify the days that we're talking about. Right. So let's go back to the calendar that we that we um, looked at earlier. And this is it. And this, this is where we are. Let me get my marking pencil. All right, this is where we are today, right? And this is the Sabbath. Now, the scripture says that in the um that the that this month is the first month of the year unto the Israelites. And remember, we when we did our study on the calendar, when we did our study on the calendar, um that we identified that the first day of the first month of the first year and the beginning of the counting of years for the earth, that first day was a Thursday. Remember we talked about that, right? Remember we talked about that. Let's, let's go back to it real quick. It is Genesis the first chapter and we and we um identified we identified that in verse 16 it says that god made two great lights which we know are the sun and the moon and he set them in the firmament of the heavens and the scripture said that that day was the uh, Fourth day of the week. The fourth day of the week is when he made the sun and the moon and set them in the heavens. So the very first 24-hour cycle of sun and moon operating 
would be what? The fifth day. And that would be the very first day of the first year of the first month for the entire earth from that time. So let's go back and look at our calendar. So it says that on, this is the fourth day of the week. One, two, three, this is the fourth day of the week. And it says on that fourth day of the week, the Lord created the sun and the moon. Remember we did this before, right? That's the sun, okay? And this is the moon. Sorry for the crude drawing, all right? <laughs> this is the moon. Somebody said, Judah, you can do you can do it better than that. So let's let's let it look pretty. All right, so this is the moon. Make it like that so you can see it. All right, so that's the moon. So God made them on this day and set them in the heavens. So which day is the first 24 hours? This one. This one. So your very first day of your first year and your first month. First day of that first month is on the fifth day of the week, on a Thursday. What we call a Thursday today, right? Would be your fifth day. That's your very first day. So this is the reason why. And by the way, and this also happens in when? In the spring. All right. So it begins on the Wednesday evening that we know as evening, which is Thursday, Thursday. And it ends on Thursday evening. That's the first day. That's the very first day. Yes, that's okay. the very first day of the first month of the first year. So when the Lord came to the Israelites, to Moses in, in Egypt, that we just read, and he said, this shall be the beginning of the month for you and the first month of the year for you. This is the month that he was talking about. Why? Because remember that the Babylonians, not the Babylonians, sorry, the Egyptians and the pagans never worshipped. Or kept these these months. What were they keeping? The moon. Right? They were keeping the moon. And worshipping them. Now remember we read that. Right? In the Jubilees. Remember we read it? Where it, say, where it says that certainly they will make observation of the moon. Right? So that's what they were doing. So when when, when the Lord came to Moses in the land of Egypt. And said, you're going to start your month now. It was on this same day. The Lord was reestablishing the very first day of the first month of the first year. That God had established from the creation. All right. And remember that after. Remember that after this fourth day. Sorry. After this fourth day. Then there was the fifth day, and then there was the sixth day, and then the next day was the Sabbath. The next day was the Sabbath. All right. So the beginning of the year after uh, after the beginning of the year, you must have three days to your Sabbath. You must have three days to your Sabbath. So. Uh, this is why we have on our calendar, this is your first day, this is your next day, and the third day you must have a Sabbath. All right? And I'm going to show you something also, family, since I'm speaking about this. I'm going to show you something. You know, and it, and it is related to this subject. So, you know, when you go to, um, to Exodus, uh, when you go to Exodus chapter 5, and the Lord said to, to Pharaoh, he says this, he says this, let my people go. And we're going to see how that's going to play in right here. He says, let my people go. Verse three says, and they said, the God of, of uh, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Who's saying this? Uh, Moses and Aaron. Is talking to the Pharaoh. That the God of the Hebrews that met with us. Let us go. We pray thee. How many days? Three days journey. In the desert. And sacrifice unto Yahweh our God. Lest he fall, up, fall upon us. With pestilence and with sword. 
So he's they're saying that the, that um that the Lord said to Pharaoh, let the people go and journey three days into the wilderness so that they may sacrifice. All right, we're gonna read this again. Let's read this again. Family, line upon line, precept upon precept. It it takes two witnesses to establish a point. Uh, Exodus 8 verse 27. Watch this. And we will go three days. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahweh our God as he had commanded us. Three days. Now what you think, what you think, which day you think this third day is going to be after they left Egypt? It's going to be a Sabbath. It's going to be a Sabbath. Right? They're, they're going to, the Lord said, let them leave for three days journey and then worship me on the Sabbath. That's what it is. This is another way how you know whether your calendar is accurate. You know, if you're following the moon, you can't get this. All these people this year, and I've seen some camps already, who have announced their feast days for the Passover. And this is a question you must ask them. Because they're setting their feast days off the moon. And if you if you leave after after your Passover, whenever you whenever these camps celebrate their Passover, three days after that is not a Sabbath. I guarantee it. Three days after their Passover is not a Sabbath. Right? Now, this three days and three nights plays into the three days and three nights that the Lord rested in the grave after he was crucified. Now, we're going to get into those details, and you're going to see it, family. You have to see it to see it. And this is why I said I have a great, huge burden for Israel, because they're not keeping the feast days on the right days, and they're following the moon. Right? Now we're going to prove it. We're going to prove it that three days and three nights after the Passover is a Sabbath. Three days and three nights also after the first day of the year always is a Sabbath. Always. Let's get back to the calendar. So this is where we are today um, on, the, on the 9th of the Pagans March, 27th day of Adar. So our 12th month Adar has um, after today we have one, two, three, four, five days. So in five days, family, in five days, we will begin our first day of Abib. Okay? We'll begin our first day of Abib in five days. And so we're going to be saying Happy New Year. All right? We're also going to be saying Happy New Moon. Because remember that the first day of the, of the month the first day of the first month is a new moon celebration. We talked about that before, right? That we celebrate the four new moons. And one of them is the first day of the first month. And it's a new moon. So, you, so this is why those of you who have received a calendar from us is the reason why you see on your calendar right here, you see happy new moon. That's the reason. All right. And that is scriptural. We can go over that also, which we will. Okay. And then you will have the three days to the Sabbath, according to Genesis um, 14 to the end. Sorry, Genesis 1, verse 14 to the end that we just read. Okay. Genesis 1, verses 14. Remember, we started here at verse 14 where the Lord made the sun and the moon, and then that was the fourth day, and then the fifth day, and then the sixth day, right? And then what happens? There was the Sabbath. If you jump to the next chapter, it says, Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them, and on the seventh day is the Sabbath. There it is. There it is. All right, now, let's, Let's continue. So, um, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread that the Lord established 
with the children of Israel that we've just read about in Genesis in, in Exodus 12. Okay. Um, it has significance, right? It has significance. And so let's see what the significance is. And we're gonna go to our scripture. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. It says, for the law, what law that we just read, Leviticus 23, having a shadow of good things to come, and that the very image of the sin can never with those sacrifices, which they offer year by year, continually make the comers thereon to perfect. So this um, Passover and all the feast days, which were yearly, that the sacrifice continually year by year could never make the comers perfect, could never make the people that did them perfect. Right? Why? Because they were a shadow of good things to come. And, and so who or what is the real? And the real is Yahweh Shai. The real is Yahweh Shai. So... Just as in um, what we discussed concerning the birth of Christ, where, where that he fulfilled the prophecy, that he was the, the real deal, so also with these, with these uh, feast days, that they have to be fulfilled in the real. And so what we have to do is to form the scriptures to see what was the Antitypical, I say antitype because the shadow is the type, and so the antitype is the real, right? So we have to comb the scriptures to see if these things were fulfilled in antitype or in the real. And so, what we're going to do right now is to identify whether this happened, and we're going to go to the book of Mark. The fourth chapter, the fourteenth chapter. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse one, and it says, "Now this is New Testament." So we have just left from Egypt, we've just left the wilderness, and now we're in New Testament. And what we're going to see is whether this that was established in the Old Testament in 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 um, Egypt and in the wilderness, if was it fulfilled in the real. So here we are, March, Mark 14 and verse 1. And it says, After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priest, chief priest and the scribes sought how they might take, take him by craft and put him to death. So the question is, what day do you think is coming up after two days. What day? And let us see what day that is. Maybe it was 23. And verse 5. And in the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Passover. There it is. There it is. So. In Mark, chapter 14, and verse 1, this was two days before the 14th day of the first month. All right, so this was on the 12th. Okay, now <clears throat> it says, let's just jump down here to um, verse 12. And then it says, and the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, the disciples said unto him, what is speaking to Yahweh Shai, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayst eat the Passover? So what day is this that they're asking him, where do you want us to have the Passover? What day is this? 
It is on the 14th day of the first month. Because remember, this is what was established in the type that on the 14th day of the first month is the Passover. So now we are in the New Testament and this day came. So this day is that same day, the 14th day of the first month. And they're asking him, where do you want us to go and, and celebrate the Passover? All Judah, right. can, I, can I ask you a question? Yes, go ahead. So this Passover is not the Passover. So this is not the Passover that he was killed on. It is. So how is that possible? So how, if he was, if he was the Passover lamb for that Passover, right? And if unleavened bread feast occurs literally the same night, right? The 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 evening before. How could they have been having that conversation with him if he was already in custody? He was not in custody yet. He was not in custody yet. So right. So how? So, but how can they? So how would that? How could they have that conversation with him if he was the Passover lamb? Because he's having. Okay, good. That's a good question. So let me show you. Good question. Who is this? This is Amanda. Uh, because this is oh, a. Man. We just had this conversation with my group, uh, and we had a big going around with that because, you know, I was saying that that could not have been a conversation they could have had with him about the Passover because I know the Last Supper was not a Passover meal he had. Uh, it was just it's, the way I read it. It was just that evening they had a meal, which was the Last Supper, because right after that meal is when he went the next morning he was captured. So that that couldn't have been the Passover meal because he died what on that what Wednesday night. <laughs> he was put, you know, taken down off the cross that Wednesday night. So that's where um, the my confusion is is how could that it have been was. What the, first it was. Day, the first day of the unleavened bread. No, it was, it was. Let let him explain to you. All right. So good question. That is a good question. Okay, so this is a good question. By the way, sis, this is Amanda, right? So yes. Amanda, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. good. Uh, family, this is this is very good. You know, for me, this is a good sign, um, and uh, it means that we are seeking the Lord and that we want to know the truth, and that we are on the road to repentance, right? So here's a good question, and I'm going to show you, um, how it works out, right? But first, let's agree. First, let's agree. That when it says in Matthew in Mark 14 and verse 12, that the first day of unleavened bread, when they kill the Passover, has to be the 14th day of the fourth of the first month. It has to be that day. Because this is the day when the Passover is killed, right? Remember, remember in Exodus 12, the Lord said it right here. The Lord says it right here. Um, and verse six. Thank you, family. Mute your mic as soon as you join. Thank you. All right. So, um, to Amanda's question, right? Now remember that this is the day that the Lord said that they should kill the Passover. Verse six says, and they shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole congregation of the children of Israel shall kill it in the evening. All right, so now we are here. Now we are here in, Mar in uh, Mark, the 14th chapter, right? And it says, and the first day of unleavened, of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover. So which day is that? The 14th day of the first month. All right. And the disciples said to him, um, where would you want us to go to, um, to set up the Passover, right? Now, we must remember, we must remember that the Lord is having the supper. The Lord is having the supper. So let's, let's go back to our calendar. Let's go back to our calendar. Let me clean away some of this confusion, right? Let's clean this away. So remember now, remember that we just established that this day is the first day of Abib, 
this day right here, the first day of Abib. And so 14 days, 14 days from this is Passover. <clears throat> so we're going to have one, two, three. In fact, we already have our days numbered. We already have our days numbered. So let me not do this. All right, watch it, family. We already have, this is the first day. This is the first day. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is the fourteenth. This is the day of the Passover. Okay? But remember that the day starts the evening before. The day starts the evening before. Now remember, let me get my pencil again. Remember that the Passover is going to be killed on this day in the evening. The Passover is going to be killed on this day in the evening, on the 14th. All the congregation of the children of Israel must kill the Passover on that day. Okay, so the supper that Yahweh Shai had with his disciples occurred when the sun sets here on the 13th, because this is the 14th. That's when the 14th starts. So as this day came around, they, they, he, they said to him, where do you want us to have the Passover? And he says, go into the city and you'll see a man carrying a pitcher of water. Ask him for the upper room, right? Ask him for the, 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 the guest chamber and he will give it to you. So when he um, had that supper, it was here in the sunset. Here in the sunset. All right, and we're going to prove it. We're going to prove it. Watch. Let's go back to it. So it says, they asked him, where do you want us to prepare the Passover? And he sent them um, forth, two of the disciples, and said, go into the city and follow the man with the pitcher of water. Okay? All right, so they followed the man, and the man gave them the room. And it says, and in the evening, he cometh with the 12. Which evening? Let's look at the calendar right here. Because now the sun is set. And we are now in the, in the sunset of the 14th. Watch. <clears throat> and as he sat and ate, Yahweh Shai said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you will betray me, and so on and so forth. Right? All right. Let us also... Um... So, Judah, can, can I say one thing? Yeah. And see, that's the point I, I, I'm making. So go, go back to your calendar. Sorry. Here. So on the 14th is when the Passover lamb is going to be killed, right? Yeah. That, that night no. is going to start, it's going to kick off the unleavened bread and they're going to yep. have the Passover, uh -huh. they're going to have the Passover meal, right? That night. Yeah, but no, no. Which night? No, I'm going to. The 14th. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, I'm, the 14th. I'm, I'm going to move my pencil over it and you tell me which one you're yeah, talking right about. Yeah, it's right there on the 14th. Right, All right so no, so they're, they're, they're not having, yeah, they're, so. they're, they're not having the Passover this night here. They're not. They're having the Passover. You must remember. You must remember and never forget, family, that the day starts the evening before. The evening and the morning is the first day. Never forget that. So the fourteenth night is here. Not here. So they're having it without the without the lamb. What is the lamb? The Passover lamb. That's because that's when it's going to be killed, right? No, they were having it with the lamb, and then no, after no, that, lamb was killed. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see that portion. Yeah. So, okay, I, I see. I see that now. So they having the Passover meal on the uh, on your calendar on the thirteenth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And the night. Which is, yeah. Which is also the first day of the unleavened bread. No. Because remember, the, the, the scripture no. starts out, it says, on the first day of the unleavened bread. That's how it starts off. Okay. But, okay. All right. Um, remember now that the Feast of... Let's go back to... Let's go, go back, back to, to the scripture. Yeah, let's go back to Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus. I know what you're asking. No, I'm saying yeah. this scripture here in Mark. Your scripture in Mark, it says on the first day of unleavened bread. That's, what, that's how it starts off. But let, let's go back. Let's go back. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, 
Let's do this. This is this is always something that confuses confuses people. So we'll, let's do this. I'm going to come back to this, but we're going to go to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Let's go to Luke 20, 22. One, one second. All right, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, Luke 21, verse 1. Luke 22, verse 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew night, which is called the Passover. So we have to understand that the Feast of Unleavened Bread is also called the Passover. All right, so two things, happen, two things are happening, which includes unleavened bread. Two things. And unless you understand that, that the lamb is killed on the 14th and then the, the, the first day of unleavened bread begins on the 15th, you're going to have it mixed up when you see how it is said. But you have to have the proper understanding. Now, um, I think it was, I think it was Deuteronomy 16. Let's, let's go back to Deuteronomy 16 real quick. I think Deuteronomy chapter 16. And it says, and it says, I think it's 16 and 16. 16 and 16, right. It says, three times a year shall all the male appear before Yahweh thy God in the place which he has chosen in the feast of unleavened bread in the feast of unleavened bread now do you understand that this feast of unleavened bread is also the feast of the Passover yes all right good and also in the feast of weeks which is Pentecost mm -hmm. and, and also in the feast of the tabernacles yes oh, okay all right so now let's go back to where we were in Luke 22 22nd chapter and it says, now when the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. We have two feasts, two things happening. Yes. What two things? Let's go back to Exodus 12. No, I hope you're not, I'm not losing anybody. Let's go back to Exodus 12. Because it says right here, um, Exodus uh, 12 and here. Let me show you. Bear with me. Um, right here. Sorry. 18. 18. It says in the first month. No, remember. Remember, it's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Feast of unleavened bread, because up here we just we just talk about the Passover, verse verse seven, verse verse six, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day, and you shall kill it. But now we are here, and it says. In eighteen. And in the first month, and on the 14th day of the month, at evening, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread until the 21st day of the month. So we have to understand the calendar of the Hebrew Israelites. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. So on the 14th day at evening, on the 14th day of evening, this is the 14th day. And this is the evening of the 14th day. This is when sunset on the day of the 14th. On the 14th day at evening. 
But the evening of the 14th day is this one. The evening of the 14th day starts at, on the, at sunset on the 13th. And then the evening of the four, on the 14th day at evening, on the 14th day at evening, you have to watch the verbiage. On the 14th day at evening begins the 15th day, which is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So this day is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it begins on at evening on the 14th, right here. But the evening of the 14th starts at when sunsets on the 13th. And this is how you have to understand it. We should never forget that in that we, the Hebrew Israelites, observe a day at the sunset of the day before. So we have to watch the verbiage. When the scripture says on the 14th day at evening, it's talking about this day at evening. But when it talks about the evening of the 14th day, this is where it is here. Two different things. Now, on this day, on the evening of the 14th day, they're going to have a supper with unleavened bread. Right? So this is how it was fulfilled in the real, because, because Yahawashai has to die here. And he, can, he could not be dead and then be having the supper the same night. Which is the question you're asking. He could not be dead and have the supper the same night. So he's having the supper this night, as you're going to see, right? So let us continue and you're going to see it. Let's go to Luke 20, 20, 22. And let's get this picture. Now remember, three gospels are discussing the same event. And so we have to, we have to um, see the event in the light of the three gospels and not just one. So let's go. This is Luke 22, and we're going to start. And it says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drawn now, which is the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. And then Satan entered into the heart of Judas. Ascariot, right, being one of the twelve, and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and the captain, or they might betray him. And then it says, and they were glad. They're like, yes, we have a we 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 um we have a God sent, right? That's what the Christian is a God sent, right? But it wasn't God sent because this was of the of the will of the Heavenly Father. So they said they were glad and they covenanted with him and they gave him money. Okay. Watch verse seven. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover is killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where will you have us to prepare the Passover? So this is the exact same um, uh, our time and day that we're talking about over there in Mark. And then he said, he said to them, go into the city and you shall find a man. And you should follow him, and he's going to give you the upper room. Now, now we are at verse 14. And you're going to see the whole thing laid out, and you're going to see that they were doing it this night. All right, watch. So now they have the Lord's Supper. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve with him, and they said unto him, sorry, and he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. So remember now. So you see, he's going to suffer this very day. But they were doing this when? In the evening. In the evening of this day. Right? In the evening of this day, when the sun set, is when they're having this conversation. And he's sitting with them at the supper. So he's this, having his own supper with them, knowing that had, he's the Passover lamb. This is it, yeah. Yes, who is that, sister? Who is that? Sister uh, Ruth? Yes, thank you. Right, mm -hmm. so now, right. <clears throat> so he said, so he said, it is with desire, I have desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. So he's eating it before he dies. So he could not be eating it on the day when he died. He, and he could not be eating it in the evening of the day when he's dead, right? Because he's already dead. So that's not the day when he's when he's doing this. And, and remember, he must die on the 14th in the evening. 
and he's going to die on the 14th in the evening. All right, so watch this. And he said, for I said to you, I will not anymore eat thereof. Pay attention to this family. I will not eat anymore thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. This is why the scripture says that this is a memorial forever. Christ did not put an end to it. Because we're going to keep it in the kingdom. All right. So all the churches that tell you what the is done is done away with and it's not replaced with the communion that you can do every 13th Sabbath. It's nonsense. All right. It says, and then he took the cup and he gave it to them and he gave thanks. This is why they have the wine. Because remember, the green herbs is the wine. I'm going to prove that when we're doing the Passover. All right. And it says, take this. And he said, divide it among yourselves. For I said to you, I will not drink of the fruit. Here he said it again. Until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, which bread is he breaking? Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Yes, right? unleavened bread. Yes. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. So what is he telling them? To keep the Passover. Every year shall the children of Israel come before the Lord to keep the Passover. Right? In the feast of the Passover, in the feast of Pentecost, and in the feast of Booths. It never ends. So Yahweh Shai is telling them to continue to do it. Until I right? eat with you again in the kingdom. Until he until he meets up meets us again in the kingdom doing the exact same thing. All right, so um, let's continue. Well, let me uh, let me see what's in the chat first, and then I'm going to continue from here. But you'll see that how it plays out, right? <clears throat> um, whoa, this is so powerful. Thank you, Brother Judah. Pastor in the churches have no clue about the Passover. Yes, brother, thank you so much for that. That was my brother from Trinity. Uh, Judah says from evening to evening. Yes, brother, from Jude from evening to evening is the day. All right. Um, it says times and seasons have been have been changed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Now, what happened next? They start to complain who's the greatest, right? And he said, relax. All right. Let me show you who's the greatest. I'm the greatest among you, but I'm going to do the menial task. I'm going to wash all of your feet so you know you should be humble, right? Okay. Next thing. Then what did they do? They went into the garden. It says, and they said, Lord. Um, so he said, you should have a sword. Okay, next, next verse. They went into the garden. And he came out and went as he, um, as he was wont to the Mount of Olive. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And then he went a little further on. He says about this casting of a stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Now remember, this is now him in the garden praying. And he's praying, Lord, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Right? All that stuff. Then what happened? This guy came in. And while he yet speak, behold, the multitude. Uh, uh, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near. Unto Yahweh, our shy, and kissed him. This was that night. Which night is that? This night. Judas came, kissed him. Yahweh shy said unto him, Judas, have you betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss? Yeah, okay. So what happened? Um, Peter drew the sword, he cut the guy's ears off. Yahweh shy put it back on, right? And then what happened? They arrested him. They arrested him that night. <clears throat> then took they him and led him and brought him to the high priest's house. And Peter was afar off. Now, remember, this is happening at night. This is how they were able to, to get him convicted, you know, in the absence of the people. In the absence of the people. Now, remember, if we go back to verse 1, it says that they sought or they should kill him in the absence of the people. And this is how they did it, right? Okay. So this night, they arrested him. They brought him to Pilate. And you know what happened, right? And then, and Peter denied him three. 
Peter denied him three times. You know, a Peter, cock crow, yeah, Peter was at the fire warming, right? No, by morning, by morning, the cock crew. All right, so now, then as soon as it was day, let's go to our calendar. So this, all of this happened here at night, and then this is the morning on the 14th. The, the true, um, I shouldn't say the true 14th. I'm going to say when the 14th is fully come. This is now morning of the 14th. It says, and as soon as it was day, the elders and the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and they led, and they led him into the council, into their council. Okay. And they say, are you the Christ? And the rest of it, right? And then we got to the end of this chapter. Now we're going to jump to, to chapter 23. Then they took him before Pilate. What is this? Now the day of the 14th. They took him to Pilate. And the whole multitude of, of them arose. And they led him to Pilate. And <clears throat> they began to accuse him. And Pilate, you know, asked him this question and so on and so forth. Now Pilate said, you know what? Take him to Herod. So now they took him to Herod. And when Herod saw how he was exceedingly glad because he always wanted to see him. Um, and he was desirous to see him for, um, for a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped that he would see some of his miracles, right? So he was glad to see him. Pilate took him, Pilate examined him, Pilate said, I don't see any reason why you bring this man to me, right? So Pilate seek to release him. Same day, right? So we continue. They say, we have no other friend king but Caesar and what happened and it says and he Pilate let's start to 24 Luke 23 24 and Pilate gave sentence that he should be as they required by the way by the way this is the hand of the Lord right here this is fulfilling yes yeah this is fulfilling Exodus 12 and verse 7, where it says, The whole congregation of the children of Israel shall kill it in the, heat, in the evening. Right? So this is how he got killed. Now remember that, that Yahweh Shai, being the true lamb, being the true sacrifice, must be given up to be killed. Now, in the ceremonial, in the ceremonial system, when you commit a sin, you have to bring your lamb. You have to bring your lamb to the priest to kill it, to get it killed. The Israelite must bring his lamb to the priest to get it killed for the remission of the Israelite's sin. So the Israelites must offer up their true sacrifice to be killed. So they offered him up. So they offered him up. Yes, they offered him up. Yes. yes. And then with Judas betraying him. So they yes. Him. This is how they have to do it. And this was orchestrated by them on purpose. In fact, we're going to read a scripture about that, right? They, it was orchestrated by them on purpose. And they knew that it must be done on the 14th day of the month, on the same day that when they would have killed the Passover. Because they knew that this was prophesied from the time that they were in Egypt the first time that this must come, right? So they were fulfilling that which was prophesied. And, um, and it occurred, family, it occurred on the very day in which it would have occurred in the type. Now, this is my big, big burden for Israel, you know, because when we get to the fall feast, you're going to see why. You're going to see why. So we have to keep the Passover as the Israelites were keeping the Passover at the time of Christ, on the 14th day of the first month, in order for the sacrifice to be killed on that same day. And this is the reason why God said to the Israelites, Deuteronomy 16 and 16, he said, every year, all the men of Israel must come to the feast, in the feast of the Passover, in the feast of uh, uh, Pentecost, and in the feast of Tabernacles. Every year you must do it. And they were all there. Yes, and you have to do it on that day. All right, so so they so he sentenced him, right? And he and he released unto them him, right? For sedition and murder, they released the other guy. 
right? Who was cast into prison, whom whom they desired. So they they got Barabbas. But he delivered Yahawashai to their will. And what happened? They, he carried the cross. They have Simon of Cyrene helping to carry the cross right here. Okay. And they took him and they crucified him right here. Okay, so which day is that? This day. This day. So they killed him. Carriage on the third day he rose. Yeah. But hold on, please. Don't run ahead of me. Not running, not running. <laughs> they killed him. They killed him here on the 14th day at evening. In the evening, remember, he was put on the cross in the evening of the 14th, fulfilling Exodus 12 and also Leviticus 23 of the Passover being on the 14th day of the first month. That's where he was killed. Right? Now, what happened when he was killed? What happened when he was killed? As the sun was setting that evening, they had to take his body down. Why? Because the Sabbath was beginning. What Sabbath was beginning? The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This one. But remember, it starts in the evening when the sun sets here. So this was going to be a Sabbath, a high holy Sabbath, a high day Sabbath. So they had to take his body down right here. Because remember, Joseph had to go to the pilot and say, we have to get this body. Because the Sabbath drew on. That Sabbath which drew on is this. Is this. Leviticus 23. But hallelujah, somebody have to mute their mic. All right. Um, that Sabbath with Jew on is this. We're in Leviticus 23. And it says, and it says, so on the 14th day of the first month, at evening, at evening is the Passover, right? At evening is the Passover. So he died right here in the evening. Right? Then what happens? Then what happens? And on the 15th day of the same month, is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. But watch this. It says the first day of that seven days is a Sabbath. So, so if he died here, as the sun is setting for the 15th to begin, the Sabbath of the first day of unleavened bread is beginning. That Sabbath. And so they had to get this body down. They'll get the body down, wrap it in, 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 in spices and oil, and put it in the tomb before the sun sets here. Because the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is beginning. So, let me move this confusion from our, from our calendar and you'll see it, right? This is why we have our calendar set up this way. So, he died here. I'm going to put the cross here. As the sun was setting here, they say we have to get this body down. Why? Because the 15th is beginning. And this is the 15th, which is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it is a high holy Sabbath. It's not the weekly Sabbath. It's a high holy Sabbath. Also, 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 family, pay attention. This is the day. When the Lord led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Remember, I said, in this self same day, the Lord led their armies out of Egypt. This day, because remember, they killed the Passover here. This day is the new day when the Lord led them out of Egypt. And what they were supposed to do? Journey three days and worship. Do you see it? So the three days of leaving Egypt, which we read, which we read, let's read it again. Let's read it again. Um, it's uh, Exodus 8. Let's read Exodus 8, because that's a good one. Exodus 8, 27. It says, we will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice unto you our God as he had commanded us. Right? From the day when they left, they traveled three days into the wilderness to sacrifice. 
Now, if you read the book of Joshua and the book of Jubilee, it will tell you that the Egyptians said, oh, we remember that they had said that their Lord asked them to travel three days and sacrifice. So we have time to catch them up, to catch up on them. That's what the Egyptians say. And they all saddled their horses and got their chariots and came after us in the wilderness. Three days journey, okay? We, we're going to read all those things as we get into this whole feast day, and we're going to go into it into details. Today is just the basics. All right, so what happens three days and three nights after? It's a Sabbath. But something else also happened. Something else also happened. It is what? Let me clean up our calendar again, family. Pay attention so you can see it, right? All right, so let's clean it up. So he died here on the cross. The sun sets. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is right here. This is why you see on your calendar, if you got one of these, it says the high day of Sabbath, the first day of unleavened bread. This is it. This family, if you look here at the bottom of your calendar, it says the crucifixion, the first night in the grave. Remember, they took the body down, they put it in the grave right here. This is the first night in the grave. First night in the grave. This is his first day in the grave. It says, First day in the grave and second night in the grave. You see it right there on your calendar? Because that's the second night. Then this is the third. This is the uh, second day in the grave. Uh, yet this is the third night in the grave. See, it says it right there. Second day in the grave, third night in the grave. What happened the next day? This is the third day. What day is this? It's the Sabbath. No, he's not going to be in there the fourth night. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. No. So you'll notice it says here, third day in the grave, but the resurrection at sunset. Because he did not stay four days, four nights. So these are the three days and three nights, right? which were prefigured in the Exodus, which were prefigured when this was established the very first time to be fulfilled on the very day in which it was established in the type, it was done smack on. Yahweh Shai, in the evening of the Sabbath, rose from the dead. Right here. As the sun was setting, Sabbath, because he rested on the Sabbath. Right? He rested on the Sabbath. And he rose this day at, at evening, at sunset. He rose. Then what happened? Then what happened? Remember now, let's go to, <clears throat> let's go back to, we were in Luke chapter 23. So they, um, so they killed him, right? They crucified him here. And then they buried him the same evening. Right? And then he says, and they return and prepare spices and ointment and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. This Sabbath day is the first day of unleavened bread. This Sabbath day is the 15th day of the first month. All right, let's jump. Now we are, we are in chapter 24. Now, now, they, now they rested on, let me get my calendar. Uh, they rested this Sabbath, right? And then on this day, they went out and got spices and ointment, right? And then there's another Sabbath, this Sabbath. How do we know? Because it says upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre, bringing their spices as they had prepared and certain others with them. And what did they find happen? That they found that the stone was already rolled away. 
So Yahweh Shai rose at the sunset here. So when they got there this morning, right, he was already risen and it was the first day of the week. Now let me show you what happened on the three days and three nights after the crucifixion. Let's go back to the scriptures. Exodus, sorry, Leviticus 23. <clears throat> so on the 14th day of the Passover, on the 15th day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and they should do all this, right? And then watch this. Watch this. Speak unto the children, unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you shall come into the land, which I will give you, and you shall reap the fruits, the, the, the harvest thereof. Then shall ye bring a sheep of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest. Now remember that the Lord is laying out the feast days, right? He's laying out the feast days. With all the feast days. The Sabbath. Then you have the 14th day, which is the Passover. Then you have the 15th day of unleavened bread. So the Lord is saying this. Watch this. Let's go to verse 11. You shall bring the sheaf to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. When is the, when is the, the priest waving the sheaf? On the morrow after the Sabbath shall the priest wave it. And you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheaf, a lamb, Without blemish of the first year unto the Lord. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to it. This is the calendar. So now the three days and three nights passed, and it says on the morrow after this Sabbath, the morrow after this Sabbath, which is what? The first day of the week, this day. What day is this? Let's go back to. Luke 24, this day, the morrow after the Sabbath is the first day of the week. What happened on the morrow after the Sabbath? You know what I should do? I should have another Bible page, so I don't have to keep doing this. Let's open one more. All right, so let's go back to Leviticus 23. All right. And let me... Let me put the two Bible pages next to each other so we can have them side by side. Okay, so now, Leviticus 23 says, Leviticus 23 says that you shall bring a sheaf to the Lord and, the, and, the, and the, to the priest, and the priest shall wave it on the morrow after the Sabbath. On the morrow after the Sabbath shall the, the, the priest wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. Now, which day is that? It is this day on the first day of the, of the week. So what happened on the first day of the week? Yahweh Shai was risen. And Yahweh Shai is what? He is the wave sheep. He is the first fruit. Now remember that the, that the wave sheep is the first fruit. Because the Lord says that you shall bring the first fruit of your, of your harvest to wave before the Lord on the morrow after the Sabbath shall the priest wave it to be accepted for you. That wave sheaf is Christ. That wave sheaf is the first fruit to be waved for, um, before the Lord to be accepted for you. Now remember that on this day, when they came to the, the tomb, they never found him. Right, And if you just continue to read the story, you're going to see that one of the women, when they saw him, she was going to touch him. And he said, touch me not. Why? Because I have not yet ascended to my, to my God and to your God. So they couldn't touch him because if they touched him, he would have been defiled. Because he had to present himself to the Lord that day as the first fruit. So this resurrection morning. This resurrection morning is the morning of the first fruit when the, when the sheep is waved before the Lord on the morrow after the Sabbath. So this is how we know, this is how we know 
that this is perfectly accurate. The three days and three nights completed, he rose as the sun was setting on the, on the first day of the week. And on this day is the first fruit. Now here it says on your, on your calendar, it says the wave sheaf, which is the first fruit. And this wave sheaf begins the count to Pentecost. That day also is the fourth day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we are still in the week of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because remember, the week of the Feast of Unleavened Bread started here. So by the time we get to first, um, first fruits, we'll be in the fourth day of the Feast, the feast of Unleavened Bread. Right now, unleavened bread continues and ends here. Remember, the scripture said to the 20 and first day of the month. That's the seven days of unleavened bread, and it is a high day Sabbath. Remember, the scripture says the first day shall be a Sabbath, and the seventh day shall be a Sabbath. It's a high day Sabbath, it's not a weekly Sabbath. All right, now this is the problem that the people who are following the moon they are going to have. Because they're not going to have a Sabbath here. They are going to fall out of sync or out of sync with this. If you're following the new moon. Right? Now, remember we just said that the wave sheaf begins the count to Pentecost. Remember we said that. Now let's go back to Leviticus 23. And you're going to see it. Now the Lord says, verse 15, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf to wave of an wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall have a new meat offering unto Yahweh. So the Lord just says right here that from the day that you brought the sheaf to wave, right, which is the morrow after the Sabbath, which is the first day of the week, from that day you should count seven Sabbaths to unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. Ye shall number 50 days. Now, let's go to our calendar. So wave sheaf begins here. That's what we said. This is where you count. You're beginning your count to, to, to Pentecost. Because the Lord says on this same day when you brought the sheaf to wave, you're going to start counting 50 days. And I'm not going to count the 50 days, but it says seven Sabbaths shall be completed, right? So this is Sabbath one. You see it says here, the first Sabbath of the Feast of Weeks. Then this is Sabbath number two right here. Then this is Sabbath three. This is Sabbath four. This is Sabbath five. This is Sabbath six. This is the seventh Sabbath. It says seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you have 50 days. This is the morrow after the seventh Sabbath here. And it's Pentecost. It's Pentecost. This is the day on which the Holy Spirit came. When is it? It's on the first day of the week. Now, this is a problem that the camp people are going to have in a big problem. They're always having this problem every year. Because you do not get, if you're following the moon, you cannot get seven sets of Sabbaths. And on the 50th day, it falls on the first day of the week. It never happens in the camps. And this year, I'm going to make videos um, of these camps, of their new moon Sabbaths and their and their feast days for the for the um for the Passover because they've already announced them and I'm going to make videos to prove that they are wrong. All right, all right. So, um, not to make this lesson too long, but just to touch on the basics, right? And to again emphasize. That if you're following the moon to keep the feast days, you're wrong. And also to emphasize, which is my big burden, that we must 
keep the feast days on the same days on which they were established back then. The exact same days. And if Yahweh was not doing that, then he could not die on the 14th day of the first month as the lamb. He could not rise and present himself as the wave sheaf on the morrow after the Sabbath here. When he says, touch me not because I have not yet ascended to be accepted, right? That's what it means. Now, we're going to go into this again in details when we do the, when we do the Passover. Because we're going to see how that Paul says that Yahweh has risen, being the first fruit um, from the dead. And the wave sheaf, Yahweh is the wave sheaf. So Paul understands this clearly. Right? We're also going to look at um, the fact that when Yahweh rose from the dead, you know, you know, remember that he kept also the feast of unleavened bread. He rose in the middle of the week of unleavened bread. And he went on to his disciples and said, um, children, have you any, any meat? And they brought bread and gave to him, right? What bread was that? The unleavened bread. So he kept the feast of unleavened bread even after his resurrection. <sighs> right? And then, and then Pentecost occurred 50 days after Christ's resurrection. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, yes. We're going to go into all that. This day here, this day that the Christian church talk about they're speaking in tongues, right? Well, this day here, Acts 2. Acts 2. This day is that day. Yeah, Pentecost. Yes, 50 days after the resurrection. And it's not hard to prove it. Watch this. It says, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Okay, all right. Let's look in the tools. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. This is the word. Pentecost day. And if you look at the meaning of it, it says, the 50th day. You see it? It is the second of the three great, they call it, they say Jewish feast, celebrated at Jerusalem yearly. What three? Passover, Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks, and Tabernacles. They are the three. So I say this is the second of the three great feasts that celebrated at Jerusalem yearly. The seventh week. What? The seventh week after Passover. Remember, it says seven sets of seven Sabbaths shall be completed. And the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is the 50th day. This is it. Right? And it is in grateful recognition of the completed harvest. This is what we have on our calendar. This is how it is set up. You have to have 50 days from resurrection. 50 days, seven sets of Sabbath. And the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is the first day of the week, which Pentecost is. In fact, if you look at the calendar here, this is the pagan calendar. You can see them. They already print Pentecost right there. You see, they printed it there. Right. So our calendar is perfectly in match with the Hebrew Israelite calendar. Right. And this recur every year in the exact same manner. Right, we did this. If we scroll back to 2023 calendar, you're going to see we have the same thing lined up, exact the exact same way, right? And we, and, uh, and there are other ways also that we're going to prove our calendar as we um as we continue to uh, to teach. You're, you're going to see that it is absolutely perfect. People send me email asking the same question: How do we celebrate it? Where do we go? Who do we right? So watch this. Let's go back to. This is the biblical answer to your question. Exodus chapter 12. It says, it says, speak unto, this is Passover. Speak unto the congregation of Israel and say to them, on the 10th day of the month, you shall take a lamp, right? According to your house. Come to the house of your fathers. A lamp for an house. This lamp for an house is Yahweh Shai being established in your household as the lamb um, that is sacrificed for you and your family. And it says, and if the household is too little for a lamb, that means if it's, if it's you alone, then you could go to somebody else's house. In our time, because we're not actually killing any actual sacrifice, you can have an, and celebrate the Passover in your own home by yourself if it's you alone. If you know a brother or a sister that's celebrating, you could go to, you could go to them and join them. But if it's just you and your family, and your household, 
you keep the Passover in your household, have a supper, have unleavened bread, have, a, have some wine. Some people don't like to drink strong drink. You can drink grape juice if you, if you so prefer. I drink strong drink. God, there's no sin to it. All right. So, um, but you can have a, a supper in your own home at the sunset of the 13th, right? Some people have it on the 14th itself. Um, you know, I, I say that's fine too. But, but, um, in recognition of that day, you can you can celebrate it in your own home. You don't need to have a congregation or a camp to go to. All right? Me, I have no congregation or camp to go to. I celebrate it in my own house, my own household. Uh, that's the way we do it. Um, and every year we, we, we record it. I have never posted any of our, our past, our past um, Passovers on YouTube. I have not done it, but we're recording of it. We may post it this year. All right, so that's how you that's how you celebrate it, brother, in your own household. Because it's a personal thing. All right, it says every man according to his eating. But we don't right. have to get lamb, right? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a lamb. It doesn't have to be a lamb. I see them killing lambs every day. Hey, stop. Like you have a shy died. So any meat. Lamb. Any meat of your choice. Yes. Any clean animal. Clean yes, eat. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not a rice pizza kill and eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. This idea that these camp people think they're about to be killing lambs. Hey, you were you, you forget that how shy died? <laughs> have you forgotten that he died so that you don't have to be killing Elder. lamb any, anymore? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey Elder. Yes, go ahead. Um the other question is is are there any uh special ceremonial practices, I guess, in celebration of uh, the feast day that I should be doing. All right, so let's talk about the Passover. Um, if we go back to Luke, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. And if we go back to Luke 22, I think it's where we were, 22, right? It says, this is what you must do. What, what did he say? It, and, he's, and, and he took, and, and um, for I say unto you, no, not that verse, next verse. And he took bread and gave thanks. This is what we do at our house. We break our unleavened bread. We give thanks and we share it. And he break it and give it to them and say, this is, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. There is your ceremony. Then you take your wine, you pour it. And he says, likewise the cup, right? And he says, this is the wine which is a symbol. It's not his actual blood family like the Catholic Church teaches. I know you don't, I know you don't think that. All right. And then it says, then it says, um, which is shed for you, and and then so on and so forth, right? So this is this is how you do it, right? That's the ceremony. You pour your wine and you sing and you bless it and you eat. And we should continue. Thank you to for thank you for uh, clarifying. Should we? Is there is there any uh, fasting associated with this? No. No fasting associated with, with the Passover, but there is a fast that is associated with the Day of Atonement, which we'll talk about as that time comes up. But that is in the fall of this year, so we'll get to it. All right, we're going to be doing our, our feast day series all the way through as those days approach. Question, is that the only fast we are supposed to have, or are there any other fasts? Yeah, the, that, that's the only fast that we're required to have on, on the Day of Atonement on that Sabbath. That's the only fast. Any other fast is voluntary. And by the way, you know that the scripture outlaws fasting on the Sabbath. Somebody asks me if you need to roast, roast with meat or something. No, nothing like that. God was roast. You have a share was roasted already. Yeah, remember That's family. The bread That's and it. the wine that we need. Remember, yes, remember that Yahweh already died in the stead of this sacrifice. So you Brother don't Jesus. have yes, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. Um, no. Quick question. Um, as far as uh your regular Saturday Sabbaths and whatnot, the do's and don'ts, um, in regards to work, what do you um 
you know, I always want to enter into the Sabbath. But what if there are times when you're required to work? What do you say on that? <laughs> well, what does the good. Bible say on that? Yeah, that's that's a that's, that's a good um, question. And again, it's the dilemma that we as the Israelites have. So what what we try to do is, um, if you can get out of working, let's say your boss says you are scheduled to work today, and if you can say to your boss, uh, "Can I swap out with someone else, or can you reschedule me?" And if he if he finds favor and grants you that favor, then you, you, can, you can avoid it. I always say that what we should try to do is pray to the Lord to ask him for, um, for deliverance from it, to, to, to change our circumstances, to find a replacement or you know some way to get out of that job requirement. But what if you can't get out? What if you can't get out? Then this is why we pray for redemption. Because remember, you're in captivity, you know. Right. We, we should remember that we are in captivity. We are yet this day in our captivity. Right? So if our master, for, remember that the Israelites in Egypt had to work on the Sabbath day. I think we did that on our Sabbath lesson. By the way, I haven't posted that yet. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to um, post it to the YouTube. But in our Sabbath lesson that we did, I think it was last Sabbath that we did it, we saw how that the, that the Pharaoh oppressed the Israelites to work seven days a week. So the Israelites were breaking the Sabbath for seven days under oppression. I mean, you know, every week under oppression. And it was Moses that went to the Pharaoh and asked the Pharaoh for one day. And the Pharaoh said, yes, you can have the one day. And Moses gave them the Sabbath. So this is how they were able to keep the Sabbath. And though they were able to keep the Sabbath, they were not able to sacrifice. Did you know that? that did you know that? That the Israelites could not, Sabbath, could not sacrifice in Goshen. I did not know that. No. Yeah, yeah. They could not sacrifice. This is why Exodus 8 Exodus 8, 27 came into play. And the Pharaoh knew this. It says, we will journey three days into the wilderness and sacrifice unto the Lord. Because you cannot sacrifice a lamb in, 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 in Egypt. Because the scripture says that to the Egyptian, a lamb is an abomination. You can't sacrifice it there. So the last time a lamb was sacrificed by the Israelites, by, by Jacob, was when Jacob was journeying to go into Egypt. When, when Joseph invited him, the, the scripture said he stopped and sacrificed. And they never sacrificed again because when you got into Egypt, you'll find out that the Egyptians say that a lamb is an abomination. And you can't sacrifice a lamb in Egypt. So we were in Egypt the whole time and could not worship. And this is why the Lord said, let them go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to me. <laughs> right? And that third day was a Sabbath. So they kept the first Sabbath um, where, they could, where they could sacrifice in the wilderness. Now, we're we're going to go back over that again. And, and when I post my, um, my Sabbath lesson, which I'm still working on it, um, please watch it and you'll see how that we read or that um, or that it was Moses that gave them the Sabbath while they were slaves in Egypt. Hence the reason the fourth commandment begins. Remember the Sabbath. Remember it because remember that they, 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 they were keeping it. Moses gave it to them. In in slavery in Egypt. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Somebody said Sawada. Said he was scared. Um, chicken is clean, yes. Oh, they're talking about food. Okay, yeah. You can eat any any um, clean animals. Now, now, family, I'm not saying you cannot kill a lamb. I'm just saying this, this fixation on killing a lamb is not necessary. Right? Um, you can buy lamb in the store and, and cook it if you want to. That's fine. I'm just saying, don't don't um 
don't pressure yourself into having to get a lamb or into having to buy um, lamb meat and into having to cook it. A lot of us can't even cook it. We don't know how to cook it so because it's not something we are we used to. So don't stress yourself out over trying to cook a lamb because it does not have to be a lamb because Yahweh already died for, the, for that lamb. We don't need to be killing lambs anymore. The lamb itself is insignificant because the lamb is a sacrifice. What is significant is that we by faith accept Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. And we, we obey by eating of the bread and drinking of the wine as a memorial for his death and, um, and his blood. Right? So that is how we keep the Passover. <clears throat> They're getting ready to kill the red heifer. <laughs> Ah oh boy, I tell you, we can't wait. You know, we were we were um saying that the the um uh, that red heifer might might uh, drop dead. They may wake <laughs> up. <laughs> they may wake up one morning and find it dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the brothers are in the camps. They are celebrating that right there, the new moon. We're not celebrating that. Our new moon is right here. It's the first day of the new month. Because remember, this is one of those words again, right? Just like we have Alma and we have Bethula, right? And we have Gar and we have Nikar. Okay, the moon in the sky is the Yarak, something like that, Yarak. And Kodesh. the new, and the, yeah, and the, the new month, the new month is the Hodesh. These are two different things, right? We celebrate this one and the camp celebrate this one. They're following the pagans. Two completely different words. So the first day of the month is this one. And the moon in the sky is this one. And they're two different things. Right? We're also going to prove that our calendar is accurate. That that the three days that that's that um we can we're gonna identify in scriptures. We're going to identify in scripture as something that the camps cannot identify. But we're going to show you how that the Sabbath occurs three days after the new month. And there is no place, there's no place in the, in the observance of this moon that the camps are doing that they can have a Sabbath three days later. But in the Bible, though, it says that the new moon occurs and then three days later, the Sabbath. So the new moon is not this moon, but it is the new month. This is the first day of the Hodesh right here. Especially and, because the new moon is uh, is the start of their Sabbath, right? Exactly. Yeah, it, they it, have a, it establishes it, their Sabbath. Yes. Yes. That's the problem. So I'm going to do videos now. I'm going to do some when they when they I'm going to I'm going to do videos on them. Right. <laughs> As these feast days come, I'm going to do video. I'm going to show the Israel. You, you, come you, on, you. find you. Well, okay, but if if they are saying if they're and this is just a side piece now, no family. We're we're ready to finish with the lesson for today. But this is just a side piece. If you if you have, I, I guarantee you now that that Apostle Tahar or Elder Ramlab have already announced that this is the new moon day, because you can see that that black that black this black dark moon this is the new moon and he has already said this is the start of their months i don't know which month they're starting now um this is the third month yeah they probably begin their third month here and they're saying this is the new moon day this is the first day of their month and they're saying this is the eighth and and then they're going to say this is the 15th right here and then this is the 22nd this is what GMS, I know, announced to their congregation, right? Now, if you have a Sabbath here, or if you have a Sabbath here, you cannot have three days after that another Sabbath. It's impossible. But in the scriptures, though, it tells you that this is the new moon and the Sabbath is here. They can never have this occurring in their calendar anywhere where they have a, a, a first day of the month and then a Sabbath three days later.
They cannot have that because this is their moon and this is their Sabbath. And it takes eight days. It takes eight days, eight days from their new moon to their next Sabbath. Eight. That doesn't exist in scriptures. Right? If this is their new moon, yeah, you have to go eight days to Sabbath. Now the Bible says already seven days. Every seven days are Sabbath. So you cannot have any eight days. And in the case, I, I think I've said this before in a, in a video before, that in the case where their months have 30 days, they have nine days between Sabbaths. <laughs> not, not nine days between Sabbaths, but the Sabbath of their next month. Where do they find that in scripture? Nine days. Yeah, where do they find that in scripture? It doesn't exist. So I'm going to be making some videos where, when I see their, them announce their, their, um, their feast days. And this family is the reason I say I have a huge burden, a huge burden. And as we get to the fall feast, you're going to see why I have a, a huge burden. Right? A huge burden because the fall feasts are going to be fulfilled on the same days on which they would have occurred in the type, the fall feast. But if you're following moon, you're off. Right, and we're gonna miss it. We're going to miss it. All right, just like them missing this now because they're going to say this is the new moon. They're saying that this is the 15th. And they're going to have, <clears throat> they're going to, you're gonna, if, if you, uh, I'm gonna go to a Pastor Har, um page and you're gonna see that he's saying that this is the 15th day of the first month. Therefore, his 14th day is here. So he's having Passover here. He's having Passover here, and this is his 15th. And that's it. this is the 22nd, and then their 29th is here. Right here. <clears throat> right? So it's it's terrible. It's terrible. It, this this is the next this, this is the next worst thing to the virgin birth. <laughs> Following the moon. All right. All right, and family, with that, all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And until next lesson, Shalom, Shalom, and Shalom, everyone.